Hello everyone, welcome. We're going to be doing the nervous system part two. Yesterday I did part one. So if you're watching this now, please know that there's a part one to it. It's just that the nervous system is a really long chapter and I wanted to get as much in. It's a little too much to um, to do more than half an hour at a time. And, and I know in the part one, I overdid it. I went over the half an hour. But hopefully, today you guys will be able to follow along. And if you haven't seen part one, I recommend you watch part two, part one of the nervous system. And this will be part two. So let's uh, start where we, t where we left off yesterday. And... Um, well, let me recap really quickly, you know. Oh, by the way, I got my, I, I didn't think of it yesterday to bring my poster, you know, for the nervous system. So this is what the nervous system looks like. And I'll be going into a little bit more detail because as therapists, this is what we want to address is the plexus. But uh, remember that the nervous system is the fastest system. It works in conjunction with the endocrine system. And if you were to stretch out, you know, all your nerves, you would have 90,000 miles worth of sensations and about 45,000 miles, uh, 45 that it stretches out, 45,000 miles. Uh, also, um, it requires, your brain requires you like 25% of the oxygen and glucose. So yesterday after doing that 45 minute video, I was so hungry. It's like I had the munchies and it was because it just took so much effort for me to think and, you know, and remember everything. And I usually get ahead of myself. So it was, uh, it's interesting that our brain requires so much glucose and so much energy. Um, remember that the cells there's three parts to a neuron. The cells, the nervous cells are the longest in the body. Axons can be, you know, uh, as long as three to four feet. They anywhere coming out of your spine all the way down to your feet. Uh, let me see what else did we talked about. The, the most numerous cells, uh, ner nervous cells are in your, uh, are the neurons. We have like a hundred billion. And then the glial cells, we have like, it used to be 10 times as much, but I think there's controversy now. I think they're discovering that there's a lot more glial cells than we thought. And uh, they support the neurons. And let me see, what else? What else? What else did I go? Oh, the three parts of the, of the neuron is the, the axon, the, um, the dendrites, and the body cell itself. Um... Or you have sensory. Sensory are the afferent. Sensory, that means that with the senses, with all, we're going to get into the senses just briefly today. But the senses, uh, the dendrites sense information coming in and the axons, you know, send the, the message going out. So going into the brain from the outside, from the peripheral to the brain are um, afferent. And from the brain, the motor are efferent. Let me see, what else did we talk about? We talked about uh, the divisions, the central nervous system, and then the peripheral, meaning on the outside. So that's pretty much a, a quick review, but really seriously, you guys should really just get into uh, watching part one. So we're gonna start with the cranial nerves. There's 12 cranial nerves that come out of your head and go straight you know, into your body. There's 12 pairs, you know, so you've got your olfactory, you know, olfactory meaning that you can smell. That's uh, cranial nerve number one. Cranial nerve number two is the optic nerve, which is in, in your eye. Uh, the oculomotor, you know, is also in your eye. That's number three. The trochlear is in your ear. The trigeminal nerve is in your mouth. The ab abducens is... Um, Abducens is the muscle, controls the muscles of your eye, your facial nerve. Oh, I'm not, I'm forgetting to give you guys the number. The facial nerve is number seven. The vestibular cochlear is a hearing for balance. You use that nerve for balance. The glasso, glasso, sorry, I have problems with saying these long words myself. Glasopharyngeal muscle has to do with our tongue controls our tongue my favorite one of all is the vagus nerve number 10 
because that's the one that control that's the one that controls parasympathetic system which is the relax you rest and digest and i want to talk a little bit more about that nerve because that's the that one comes out of your cranium and it goes straight down to your digestive system i don't know if you can see it here probably not because it's more anterior but it goes all the way down to your digestive system and it affects our digestive system oh this is not too let me turn it a little bit so you can see me more coming in and out of here so I'll talk a little bit more about the um, the vagus nerve in a minute, and then when I get to the to the nerves, and then the accessory, the accessory is you know it 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 it's affects the sternocleidomastoid and the and um so this is why it's so important for us to work on the ster sternocleidomastoid and the hypoglossal also has to do with your tongue so those are the 12 cranial nerves that come out of your cranium and they don't go through the spinal cord and then you have 31 pairs on each side of your spinal cord okay uh, uh, coming out and they're protected by your vertebrae by your 33 vertebrae so um let me see i think i like showing you guys the pictures because i think it really helps so here are the cranial nerves and if you can see you know how they come out you know from the brain the top of the brain here's the vagus nerve you know it affects your heart your liver your internal organs so this is why it's so important for you to take you know deep breaths and learn how to control that you know that nerve so it, it helps you relax the trigeminal nerve goes into your jaw you know the um, glossopharyngeal goes to your tongue right there you can see it the accessory nerve affects the upper trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid the vestibular uh it it, it affects your ear your facial nerve it face affects most of your face and the trochlear nerve you know also the um the eye and the olfactory nerve is the, you know for breathing for smelling so these are all the 12 cranial nerves my favorite is really this one because the pair you know the vagus nerve affects the parasympathetic and they all see this is what they do they send messages they receive messages and send them you know to your brain so all of these remember that these are collecting information to and from the brain I hope everybody's doing good today. So let's move on. So now you've got your 31 pairs of spinal nerves. You have eight cervical nerves. There's seven cervical vertebrae. However, there are eight cervical nerves. So there's 12 thoracic nerves, five lumbar nerves, five sacral nerves, and five coxygeal nerves. I mean, I'm sorry, one coxygeal. I'm sorry. I said that. Let me start all over again. Okay, so there's eight cervical nerves, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, and one coxygeal nerve. And this is when, you know, I kind of want to talk about this because us as therapists, you know, I want to talk about the plexus. You know, the plexus are very important, guys. Us as therapists, that's what we're going to be working with is, um, uh, you know, the somebody well somebody might come let's say somebody was in an accident and they say i can't move my arm you know i can't move my arm at all and it's like okay there's nothing wrong with the arm the arm's still attached there's no cuts no bruises nothing going on with the arm so then you know that it's coming from the cervical because the nerves you know the cervical the eight cervical nerves that come out through, from the spine something must have been pitched or hurt oh let's talk about um impingement and compression and um entrapment so let me tell you guys about the difference entrapment is when a muscle is trapping a nerve you know like as you can see right here you know you've got your upper trapezius you've got your glutes you've got your piriformis that you know that can pinch the sciatic nerve so entrapment is soft tissue and trapping the, the nerve and you know maybe causing it to uh for you to have you know numbness tingling that's why it's important for us to learn you know where the nerves more or less where they are or to take notes or when you take a medical history when your client comes in always ask what does it feel like they can say okay i'm in pain they might not know the difference 
of, you know, tingling or, you know, uh, like little ants walking on them? Or is it hot? Is it cold? Is it numb? All of those things will tell you if it is the nerve or if it's, you know, the muscle. So if they feel numbness and they feel, you know, uh, like uh, one of the popular ones is, you know, the uh, median nerve going through the carpal tunnel, you know, where they have loss of strength. So there's several things that you need to learn. And of course, in the class, you know, I, I, I try to teach all that, but, and it's, this is a beginner's class. So I teach just the basics and it's taken me many years to learn what, I, you know, to, to have gotten to this point. So don't get intimidated. Just start learning, you know, more or less. Know that there's, you know, four major plexuses. And a plexus, it means nothing more than just a highway. Like there's a lot of nerves that come together in a bundle, you know, like a freeway, like a freeway of nerves. That's what a plexus is. A plexus means that there's more than one. And you can see how, you know, the cervical plexus, there's four of them. The cervical plexus you know, there's a, you can see there's a lot of nerves coming. I don't know. Can you guys see? Is there a glare? There's a lot of nerves, you know, the eight nerves, you know, coming through here. Then you have your brachial plexus. You know, brachial rear is arm. So the brachial plexus serves the arm. So all the nerves going down your, your arm. You've got your muscular cutaneous. There's five of them. Muscular cutaneous, the radial nerve, the radial and anatomical position, remember? An anatomical position will be the more lateral. The radial nervous feeds your triceps and the top of your hand and your thumb. The ulnar is the pinky. You know, these two fingers, the pinky. The radial is these two fingers. So if somebody comes in and tells you, oh, you know, this finger is numb or this finger is numb, then you know that's the radial, radial nerve. If it's these two and half of this one, then that's the, you know, the ulnar nerve. Medium nerve is all the uh, flexors radial nerve is the extensors remember the flexors is where there's no hair where there's hair is the radial nerve the extensors um medial nerve goes through the carpal tunnel okay um we see muscular cutaneous radial is the back median ulnar i'm missing one oh axillary so axillary is the fifth one so this is the brachial plexus the cervical plexus the lumbar plexus you can see that there's a lot of nerves right here coming out through there and then the sacral plexus and some books call it the lumbosacral plexus because you can see it's like there's a concentration of nerves coming out through here so all your 30 you have 31 on this side 31 on the opposite side and then the 12 that are it coming out of the cranium out of the head they go straight to the you know to the senses to most of the senses and these are for sending messages you know into your internal um, body into your brain so the lumbar like the sciatic nerve let's talk a little bit about the sciatic nerve which is one of the things i wanted to talk to you about the sciatic nerve the roots it has five roots from l l4 5 s1 2 and 3 so that's five that form into one and it can be very thick like i told you yesterday it's the thickest and longest because it comes out from here and it goes down all the way to your foot and once it goes through the popliteal which by the way you're not supposed to work on the popliteal and put pressure there which is behind your knee because the the uh, there's uh, arteries and veins there and it's not protected by bone and then the sciatic nerve splits at the popliteal and becomes the tibial nerve and the peroneus nerve and the nerves are kind of like the arteries like and, and the veins like I teach my students depending on where it's traveling it may be the aorta however it's going to be the femoral you know aorta because it's traveling through the femur or you know the tibial nerve because it's traveling through the tibia so you can tell where they're at by the names you know by the name so if the sciatic nerve there's five here that unite becomes the sciatic nerve goes down the sciatic nerve is mainly pinched or compressed i, I mean um and trapped and trapped by the piriformis oh i didn't finish that part did i entrapment is the soft tissue the muscle compression and impingement 
is by the bone. So let's say that the bone is already pressing on the nerve. Let's say you have a herniated disc or stenosis or a bulging disc and it's pinching the sciatic nerve. That's usually, um, you know, determined by a doctor and it's done with an MRI. MRI can only see hard, I mean, uh, soft tissue and hard tissue where x-rays is only the bones and an MRI can see even the muscle, you know, the soft tissue and tendons and, and muscle and ligaments. So the if it's a compression or impingement, that's something that the doctor would determine. That's something that us as therapists will not be able to help your clients with. You'll be able to help your clients if it's, you know, entrapment that is trapped by the, uh, by the muscle, like the, you know, like the upper trapezia. Well, there's, you have to know like where they travel so you'll know. Like, uh, for example, you know, you really need to work the scalenes on people and the sternocleidomastoid, you know, when they've been in a car accident, you know, with whiplash because it will affect the vagus nerve and the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve is another very important nerve because that's the main muscle of respiration, the diaphragm, you know. So when you take deep breaths, <clears throat> the phrenic nerve it's affected if you, you know, if there's compression here or the thoracic outlet, you know, um, the triangle right here. And I know we tell you guys to stay away from the triangle here. And, and I was going to draw it on myself and I ran out of time. I was going to draw the triangle right here on the anterior part, the soft tissue to stay away from because you've got your carotid artery and you've got, you know, uh, major uh, blood vessels, you know, the um, so you don't want to put you don't want to make a person faint. So I suggest you watch my video on how to massage the scalenes and uh, the neck muscles. I have a video on, on YouTube on how to, you know, you really have to have a little bit more uh, um, schooling behind you. You wouldn't do it as a beginner, as a beginner. However, you can, you know, there's ways that you can position the head ipsilateral to really get to the sternocleidomastoid or turn your client sideways to get to the scalenes and also the pec minor is a nerve and as a matter of fact the pec minor is known as the nerve and trapper because it, if it's really tight right here you know it, it can trap you know some of the nerves so just remember that plexuses means that there's a freeway or a lot of nerves in a, in a concentrated area. So you've got your cervical plexus, your um, brachial plexus, your lumbar plexus, and then your sacral plexus. And these are, you know, you have 31 nerves coming out of the vertebral column, and, uh, and then you have 12 coming out of your cranium. So I like this little drawing. And remember, I was telling you guys yesterday on the video from yesterday that in the books, anytime you see yellow, they indicate, they're talking about the nerves. They usually draw the nerves in yellow. Anytime you see red in the book, it's usually an artery. Arteries are drawn red because they're oxygenated. It's the one that leaves the heart with full of oxygen. And then the veins are drawn blue because they're deoxygenated blood. They're returning the blood you know, from your blood system into your heart to get oxygen again. So that's just a little tip to help you learn, you know, about how the books are, are set up. So let's continue. The spinal nerves emerge bilaterally, means on both sides, and have spinal nerve roots. Both roots merge to form a single nerve, then divide into rami. So you have your dorsal rami, which innervates the neck, head, and trunk, and then the ventral, which innervates the extremities and anterolateral part of your trunk. The plexus, I, I got ahead of myself. This is barely, it, the plexus is a network of intersecting nerves from the peripheral nervous system. Uh, you have your cervical from C1 through C5. Your brachial starts from C5 to T1. And your lumbosacral is from T12 to S4. Oh, let's talk about the dermatomes. Dermatome is an area of skin supplied by one sensory spinal nerve. So it's a map. This is how doctors know and chiropractors know, like if you come in with your arm, you know, let's say, uh, you know, that, uh, that 
your thumb is numb, they know that's the radial nerve, so then they would go to see where does the radial nerve come out of from which vertebrae in order to be able to help you. And myotone is the group of skeletal muscles supplied by a single motor spinal nerve. So they're roadmaps, and let me show you a picture. This is, this is a dermatome map. For those of you that haven't seen it or don't remember it, see right here it tells you. So C2, C3, and C4 affects that part of your head. C4, 5, and 6, uh, uh, you know, it affects the top of your shoulders, like your upper trapezius. So let's say that somebody comes in and always has really tight, you know, uh, upper, uh, upper, you know, left uh, trapezius and you can't work it out. It's really tight. You know, they might have some impingement or some, something going on at C4 or 5 or 6, you know, and same thing here from T1 through T12. It tells you what it affects like T1, T, T2 affects like the, um, the, the, triceps that in the back of the arm these colors are really light so you probably can't tell the difference you know that these uh the nerves coming out of t1 t2 affects the trapezius you know so that would be the radial nerve and then you've got the c4 c5 you know affects the front like your deltoid and the lumbar area you know from um l L5, S1, S2 is the back of the leg. That's the nerves, you know, that it serves right there. Then L3, L4, L5, if somebody's coming in with the, you know, the iliotibial band, you know, tight or the side, you know, by the tibia right here, you know, um, I mean, by the fibula, I'm sorry, by the fibula, you know, you can see that it's probably coming from, you know, uh, T12 and L1. So, that's what that's what the dermatome map means is that it'll show you exactly which nerve is affecting which area of your body which is fantastic you know because then doctors or us as therapists can say oh okay so they're having problem with this area so let me check it out you know so uh, like the back of the leg that's usually the sciatic nerve and that comes from L4 5 and S1 2 and 3 so it affects not just the back of the leg, but all the glutes and the deep hip rotators. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Oh, and the myotome, that um, tells you like the muscles, the muscles, you know, like C5 affects, you know, uh, pronation to supination and elevation. And so it's the same thing, you know, rotation. So the red ones here are the, coming from the cervical. The blue line is the lumbar and the sacral. The sacral is from the waist down. Sacral affects everything from the waist down. Lumbar affects, you know, the lumbar area here. The thoracic is, you know, affects the upper part. And then the cervical affects the arms, the hands, the head, the shoulder. So it just tells you, you know, um, how the nerves affect each part of your body. So let's talk about the reflex. It's, reflex is a protective mechanism involuntary but predictable response to stimuli using a reflex art to exert its action so you have your cranial reflex mediated by the cranial nerves and your spinal reflex mediated by the spinal nerves so uh, you know it's, it's it's just a reaction some of them go through the brain some of them are intercepted before they get to your brain if it's an emergency and you need to move real quickly uh, the autonomic system divides into two. It divides into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So uh, regulates uh, the autonomic regulates involuntary responses to the organs, glands, smooth muscles, and the lungs and intestines. Like I was telling you guys yesterday, is like um, we don't, you know, we don't tell our body like, okay, you gotta digest that hamburger, or you gotta, you know, be, you know. Uh, Keep your heart, you know, uh, beating and you got to, you know, uh, regulate your hormones or you need more calcium. So you've got to break down a little bit of bone. You don't think about those things. They're autom Thank God, because we'd be dead by now. If we weren't in control of all of that. 
So the, automa the autonomic system divides into two, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Remember the sympathetic is flight or fight. It prepares you for battle. It prepares you, it dilates your pupils, it accelerates your heart rate, you know, it, it you know, puts you on alert, you know, to, to survive. And most of us nowadays is like, we really operate out of, you know, sympathetic system, you know, it's like, oh, think of the S, sympathetic S for stress. It's the one that when you're under stress, it stimulates it, you know, to, to help you survive. The parasympathetic is the one that, you know, is your rest and digest. It's the one that's happy, that wants to di eat, digest your food, uh, reproduce. You know, so it's, it's it, you know, it's you're happy, you're, you're relaxed. And that's the one that gets the vagus nerve really stimulates the uh, parasympathetic. And I wanted to show you guys, you know what, excuse me for a minute. I need to turn on my fan. I am warm already. But anyway, so your vagus nerves, which is um, cranial nerve number 12, is very important because it's the one that goes into your, you know, your GI tract. And it's, your, it's known as the parasympathetic um, nerve. So it's very important for you guys to learn how to control your, you know, your vagus nerve and how to, how to um, relax yourself. And one of the best things that they have found is deep breathing. You know, I, I like to follow the rule of five, two, eight, where you take a deep breath, you know, and you should practice this because it is a known fact that you cannot be stressed if you are in parasympathetic mode, right? Because that's the relax. So the way to help yourself with that is, you know, initiate deep breaths. Like you inhale for five, like let's, let's inhale. Hold for two. And then exhale for eight. So you inhale for five, hold for two, and exhale for eight. That really engages not just the vagus nerve, but the phrenic nerve, which the phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm. So when your belly goes out, you know you're inhaling. So inhale for five. Hold for, and then exhale for eight. This really helps to relax your vagus nerve. Another thing that relaxes the vagus nerve, and they've proven this too, is when you when you meditate. You know, you say "om." The "om" sound stimulates the vagus nerve too. So this is why meditation has proven to be so effective. This is one of the things that I do when I go to the dentist because I, you know, I don't like going to the dentist at all. So one of the things I do when I'm sitting there in the chair, you know, is I'm, I'm taking my deep breaths because I'm stimulating my vagus nerve, which is parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. And remember that if you're stressed, it stops digestion. Di digesting your food is not as important when you have to flight and you know flee for your life so it stops digestion that's why they tell you be relaxed when you're eating because if you're stressed out when you're eating then you're creating all you know uh, all these uh, emotions and then it stops digestion and then that's where you mess up your digestive system so it's very important for you to be in parasympathetic mode when you are eating you know, so you can rest and digest as you're happy. It also brings down your levels of cortisol, you know, which is the, your stress, your stress hormones. So it, it has a lot of benefits, guys. So that's the sympathetic and parasympathetic division. Okay. Um, supports functions, conserves energy. That's, that's the parasympathetic. Let's see what's next. I always get ahead of myself. Okay, oh, now we're going to talk about the senses. And uh, these are common sense. Your special senses are your taste, your smell, vision, hearing, and touch, which is where we come in. So that's why the nerve ending strokes are so important when we're giving, you know, when we're working on a client because, you know, the nerve ending strokes are real light. 
you know, remember we have the corpuscles that pick up these sensations and you're stimulating all the nerves. You know, I like to do the nerve ending strokes at the end of each session just to send the message to your brain that, okay, you're relaxing. It brings down the blood pressure of the client. So nerve ending strokes are very important and those are through touch. So we do have an effect on our clients. Okay, uh, we have many receptors that detect pressure, movement, temperature. We can taste, uh, there's five, five primary tastes, which are the salty, sweet, bitter, sour, and savory. And they're strongly influenced by smell. We can recognize uh, distinguish odors, use, uh, uses receptors, chemo receptors in the nasal cavity. Olfaction is the sense of smell, and we can pick up more, more than five, like we can only taste five. The nose can pick up hundreds of different, thousands of different smells. I don't know the exact number, but I know it's thousands of different smells, and nothing triggers more uh, childhood memories than the sense of smell. So the sense of smell is, you know, linked to emotions and memories. Vision, you know, we have rods and cones in our eyes. We have photoreceptors that are located in the retina of the eye. So they're able to, you know, uh, they're responsible. The, the rods are responsible for night vision and the cones are responsible for bright light and specialized in colors. Hearing is the ability to perceive sounds and uses mechanoreceptors located in the ear. So we have pitch. We listen for pitch and volume. Those are the two sounds. The quality of tone is the pitch and the loudness is the volume. So we have uh, perception receptors that identify and interpret sensory information. And then you have your adaptation receptors that decrease the sensitivity to a prolonged stimuli, that means you adapt to it, you know. Uh, babies adapt to, you know, to sounds very quickly and, you know, different things. So added, we have receptors that help you adapt to noise. We have exterior receptors that receive stimuli from the outside surface and takes it into, you know, like the temperature, like I got warm right now. So my external receptors told my body it's getting warm for me. So that's why I turned on the, the, um, the fan. Internal receptors receive stimuli from the inside. You know, you could say, uh, you know, I need to go use the bathroom or, you know, uh, my stomach's upset. So these are internal receptors, proprioceptors, Proprioceptors, uh, specialized, specialized interreceptors are in muscles and joints and ears and detect movement. So these are good proprioceptor. Like if you're feeling off balance, it's usually your proprioceptor um, receptors. So let's see. Oh, this is very important. We need to talk about the muscle spindle. Muscle spindle receptors are monitors the changes in the muscle length and rate of change. So muscle spindle, these are receptors in your muscles that, so that you don't tear your muscle. You know, it's like when you, like let's say you're wrestling with somebody and they're taking you like past your, uh, you know, where it hurts, you go, oh, uncle, uncle, that's your muscle spindle telling you it's too far. You're gonna tear this muscle. So then you stop, right? And the Golgi tendon organ is located in the tendon for the same reason, to protect your muscle from being torn from the joint, from the bone. So that the Golgi tendon organ is a receptor in the tendon. Thus, it has the name Golgi tendon organ. The muscle spindle monitors the, the change in the muscle when it's being, you know, a hypertonic, more, you know, or you're taking it beyond its range of motion. And those are good to protect your muscles. You know, your, your body, that's why I always tell my clients, listen to your body. It's going to tell you when you're overdoing something. It's got receptors to tell you when you're overdoing something. So listen to your body. Do not, you know, overwork it. Listen. Most of us don't. Okay. 
So let me show you. It's just a little diagram. It's just a little diagram to show you guys right here, like uh, mechanoreceptors. The Golgi tendon is located at the junction, so you can see like at the tendon. And the muscle spindle is around, located around um, intrafusal muscle fiber, so it's in the muscles to tell you, you're overstretching me too much. So this is the muscle spindle, and this is the Golgi tendon at the tendon attachments. So these are good for us to know, you know, and learning to, you know, to, to uh, share with our clients because our body's equipped to survive, you know, with anything that we, uh, you know, that, that we need. And we just don't listen, especially the nervous system. The nervous system sends messages, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, if you need calcium, it's going to send a hormone, you know, it's going to send a message to your parathyroids that are behind the, you know, that are in the thyroids. In your thyroid gland, we have four parathyroids, you know, in the, in the gland that say, okay, we need to, you know, make more calcium. So, or, you know, you're low in testosterone. We need to make more, you know, testosterone or estrogen or whatever it is your body needs. It's the nervous system and the endocrine system work together. It's the yin yang. That's what I, I, I love the body. And I love Tai Chi and I love the yin yang because it always has an explanation. You know, just when I even talk about the muscles, you know, you have your biceps, you know, that flex and the triceps are the opposites that have to relax. And then when the triceps, you know, uh, contract, then the, the biceps have to relax in order to create flexion and extension. You have the yin and yang in everything in your body. You have your hollow internal organs and you have your solid internal organs. You know, everything works together. I mean, to me, and after, you know, I love the nervous system, even though it's so complicated and some of the things, trust me, I have to study a review before I even teach it because there's just so much information and I always learn something new, but when I study the nervous system, to me, it's so exciting because, gosh, the way we are put together is miraculously. You know, we are survivors. We have everything that we need to survive. So take care of your body, you know. Make sure you start learning, you know, some of the plexuses. At least general, general idea, you know, cervical. Remember, there's uh, eight cervical nerves. We have 12 coming out of the cranium. You know, 31 pairs on each side. We have the brachial plexus, the lumbar plexus, the, uh, the sacral plexus. Some people call it the lumbosacral plexus. And the nerves, as you can see right here, like there's a plexus here, but they start splitting up. You know, they start split. Like right here, you can see the ulnar nerve. When you hit your funny bone, that's your ulnar nerve. And then it crosses over and goes to the pinky side. You know, it's the same nerve, but they kind of start branching out the way the, you know, the carotid, you know, the arteries, the artery does and the veins. So anyway, um, I think that's it pretty much. Yep. That's it. So, you know, uh, remember sciatic nerve, a lot of the times is being pinched by the piriformis muscle. So make sure and check the piriformis muscle. And, uh, this is it for the, Oh, somebody saying hi. <laughs> Ophelia Perez, so oh, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, so you guys, make sure you watch part one. This is part two. So till the next time, guys, create a great day. Oh, I'm going to do the endocrine system next because they go, that's the yin to the yang. So till the next time, guys, create a great day. Thanks for tuning in.